Well, for you Star Trek aficionados, I think it was Spock that said, for everything there is a first time. So this is the first time I'm doing anything like this at all. Now, uh, what I did is I went online, obviously Amazon, so I picked up a DeVildis um, paint kit. It comes with two guns. So it comes with a, uh, a 1.0, a 1.3, and a 1.7 uh, tip. And the reason is, is the thicker the product you're going to put on, the larger the tip has got to be. So I'm going to be putting on a 2K primer filler. So I'm going to go with the 1.7 and see how that works. I don't think I'm going to go to the 1.3. The 1.3 is going to probably be for the base coat. And then the 1.0 or 1.3 might be for the clear. Again, I haven't done any investigation at that point yet. But I'm going to see how the 1.7 flows with the 2K. So, of course, it comes with replacement bit. Uh, tips so you just you know you unscrew the tip from the gun and then of course you can see it exposes the metering rod this metering rod this is what is adjusted back here this actually either uh, increases or decreases the amount of paint being distributed uh, so like I said so one adjustment you're going to have is the ability to increase or decrease the actual amount of paint coming out of the gun the second thing you're going to be able to increase or decrease is the trigger which means the amount that this trigger is able to be depressed can also be adjusted with the knobs. So what does that do? What that allows you to do then is set it so that when you fully squeeze the trigger, you get a metered amount of paint coming out that you're comfortable with. And you're going to need a couple of test shots before you do that to find out where that is. But that makes it so that you don't over squeeze the trigger and throw too much paint. You want to just get it to the point that when the trigger is fully pressed, you get a nice clear coat of uh, paint or a nice you know, even spread of paint. And then of course, the metering rod also gives that ability to control the fan, right, as far as the paint is being spread out or not. So like I said, a lot of things to go over with the gun. I'm about to assemble it. Of course, it comes with its own pressure gauge, so I'll be able to set the cubic feet per minute on the gun based on the paint, based on the amount of paint I'm putting down. Yeah, the nice thing about buying a kit is you get everything in it. I get all the cleaning stuff I need, I have filters. It obviously comes with the paint cups. I wish these were transparent so I could see through them. Uh, spun aluminum, I guess it is what it is, but you know. Now, also what I bought is a bunch of these. It, it came in a box of like, 75 of these so it doesn't have the internal sleeve like some people they have the paint cup and then there's a sleeve that goes inside that shows you the measurement this is right on each cup and i got 75 of these i hope i don't run out in painting this vehicle i shouldn't but it has the measurements right on it to give me the eight to one the six to one the four to one you know three to one to one etc so i have all of that uh, obviously i have the two gray uh, the 2k primer filler uh, I have to have a catalyst with it. This is the four to one. So I'm going to have four parts paint, one part catalyst. Um, and like I said, so I've already got a water filter on my compressor, but it also comes with a second water filter. I am going to obviously use it. Might as well, right? Better safe than sorry. So I'm just going to assemble this with the 1.7 and uh, I'm going to then do some test sprays. Now this is a, a, something I found on another site which was a really great idea. Just put in the cup, just put some of your reducer. Um, it won't hurt the gun. And what it'll allow you to do is at least it'll allow you to spray some reducer out. You'll get the fan, you'll figure out the pattern and all of that without actually mixing the paint. Because once you mix the paint, there is a time limit. Now it's not five minutes, 10 minutes, but it is a catalyst. So you do want to paint fairly quickly after you mix the paint components together. But like I said, so you know, if you want to play with the gun first and start playing with the controls and the pressures and seeing how it works, you can just use um, the reducer. And like I said, it'll spray, it'll pattern, you can get everything you want. And then at the end of it all, you just drain it out and it's clean because of course you cleaned it with what you usually clean these things with anyway. So um, next step, assembly, and let's fire this thing up. So obviously respirator, right? I'm about to shoot this into the air. So obviously you gotta rest, put a respirator on. Uh, my compressor's probably gonna kick in during this time, so sorry about the noise, but I'm probably gonna fast forward this section anyways. And of course I'm gonna start on the under part of the hood because this is the first time I'm pulling the trigger on this thing. So I'm gonna play with it under the hood uh, and then of course I'll move to the other side. So wish me luck and there, my furnace just stopped because I shut it off, that's another thing. You're spraying this in the air. If you have any open flames, or in my case, I have an open um, furnace, shut it down, right? So you don't run the risk of an explosion. Anyways, wish me luck.
Okay, so it's been 24 hours since I sprayed the 2K. Now, this stuff is actually very forgiving. I don't know if you saw in the video the mess it actually made, and that was me. I mean, personally, I'd never used a spray gun before, and I thought I would be pretty good at it, and I was terrible at it. Uh, but it laid out actually quite nicely. So as you can see by the one side of the panel, that is untouched. I have not done anything to it, and you can really tell it's very ripply. There's a lot of mess on that. But this side, you know, this has been maybe 20 minutes with a block, right? So I'm using 120, very lightly. You don't have to push hard. Very lightly in this, uh, the 2K cuts right off real easy. Obviously, it's going to expose now further issues with the hood, right? There's absolutely high spots. There's absolutely low spots. But, I mean, this is a process, right? And depending on where you want to stop. Now, from my perspective... I could probably shoot another 2K on top of this, and considering now that most of this is pretty flat, right, because I've used a block on this entire surface, and I only have these relatively small high spots, if I shot it with another 2K and then came back at it with, let's say, a 180 just to flatten the, the primer out, I could probably just get away from, you know, and paint it at that time. And again, it really depends on what you are trying to accomplish. Personally, I may actually come back here with some filler, take care of some of the low spots. You can always tell low spots and high spots as they sit side by side. I might do one more pass with the filler and then shoot it again with the 2K. And that way there, it'll give me a good shot. Now, being up in Canada, we don't have a lot of places to go get paint. So I go to Napa. Now, Napa sells this gray 2K urethane primer surfacer. It comes with a catalyst or a hardener. You mix it uh, three to one or four to one, sorry. And then you just spray it out. And like I said, it actually sprayed pretty good for a guy who's never sprayed before. So it's actually very forgiving. So that's it. I'm going to now block the other side. I'll do a little bit of a fast forward on that for you to show you how I did it. And then we'll probably shoot this again. So before I get started, I just wanted to show you what we're fighting. We're fighting something called orange peel. And what orange peel is, is it's when you lay paint down and there are some issues, and those issues can be a long list of issues. It could be that the surface wasn't clean enough. And I'm just in a garage. I don't have a downdraft. I, you know, I don't have a clean room. So I, I cleaned this panel as best I could with the cleaners and with the tack rags, but that can cause orange peel. Another thing that causes orange peel is, is like I said, it could just be the fact that I don't know what I'm doing with a spray gun, right? So I could have literally caused that myself. But one of the great things about this 2K primer, and let me take a look at the side that I sanded, is it's almost like its own guide coat. If you look, you see how it's lighter on the one side where I've sanded and it's darker where I haven't. So as I'm sanding, this is gonna change color. And as I cut through, I'm gonna see the dark spots until I cut through all of the orange peel and get down to the, you know, to a flat surface. So I'm going to now hit it, with the, uh, hit it with the block, show you some of that. And then, as I said, once I block this side, I'll see what my highs and lows are. I'll come back with the filler, and I'll shoot it again with the 2K. And then after that, I'm probably not going to come back with a 120. I'm probably going to come in with like a 180 just to kind of flatten it out. And that will probably be the final surface that I'm going to paint. So um, like I said, let me set up, and uh, let's do some sanding. Okay, so the two blocks I'm going to use obviously is the flat block and the cylindrical block. The paper I've done, I just simply cut myself a new sheet of uh, 120. And again, all it is is I took the sheet of paper, cut it in half, because what this does, obviously one block, it'll wrap around the uh, cylindrical block. And that'll give me a chance to get into these corners here where it's rounded. It'll also get into the corners here and it'll also allow me to work up into the ridge up in this side again being able to go into that groove, but again, not like this, because you'll cut it, you gotta go in from the side. Now, as far as the flat block itself, the flat block is fairly straightforward. I mean, you just simply take it, put it around, and we're gonna be sanding the, the hood that way. So now, before we get started, remember, you never cut along a curve, right? Uh, you always have to work the body line uh, over the curve. So I'm gonna be sanding this way. Now the thing is, of course, I don't want to go in a straight line because then that'll cut a straight groove. What you do is you take the paper and you're going to be moving it on an angle. And why is that? Because as I'm going over the compound curve, I'm also going left and right. So I'm cutting the uh, paint 
on an angle. And that way there, I can cut and then cut the paint on an angle this way again. And again, I'm not putting hardly any pressure on this, right? All I'm simply doing is dragging it across the surface. And as I go across the surface, you're going to see immediately that it's cutting really easily, right? So there's all the dust coming off of it. It's cutting really easy. You can also see that I'm starting to remove the high spots of the orange peel. And I'll keep sanding until all of the dark spots are gone. And as I said, that's what's wonderful about this paint is that it is its own guide coat. I can sand this until I lose all of the dark spots and then I know I have a flat surface. Now, just like the other side, I'm probably gonna cut through and I'm gonna probably discover a little bit more where I have maybe more filler to be done. But basically, this is it. I'm gonna be doing this and uh, I'm just gonna move into fast forward now and that way there, I, you know, you can watch me do the main parts of the hood. And then as I said later, we'll probably spray it again or I'm gonna fill it, sand it, and then spray it one more time. Okay, so where are we? Uh, four minutes maybe of hitting this with the 120 has immediately taken care of a lot of the orange peel. I mean, uh, this is now a, uh, a solid light gray color. Over here, obviously, I still have some orange peel because I can still see some of the darkness. But again, I haven't really worked on that. But like I said, three or four minutes and I'm down to this consistent light gray. So it acts as a guide coat, as I said. Keep sanding until you've got a consistent color. Now, in my case, I kept sanding to get a consistent color, and I did burn through, right? I do have some spots. Now, that's because the hood is still not flat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to come back with some filler, do this one more time, sand that filler down, hit this hood with 2K one more time. Hopefully, the next time, though, when I come back on this, I'm not going to come back with the 160. I'm going to be in the 180s, and I'm just going to try to sand it to get back to the consistent gray color without burning through. That means a consistent gray hood all the way along. That's what your target is. Once you get to that, depending on the type of finish you're going for, you may have to come back with an 800. You may have to come back with a 1,000 sandpaper because what you want to do is make this as smooth as possible, eliminating all of the scratch marks. Right? We, we're taking care of the flatness, so the flatness is good. But every time you take a piece of sandpaper over it, of course, you're going to leave some scratches. So what you need to do is you got to maybe move to the 800s or 1,000 in order to get those scratches out. Because when you lay the clear coat, the, uh, the base coat, sorry, base coat is very thin. It's going to work its way into all of those scratches. So any scratches you have in your primer is going to translate into your base coat. And then, of course, your clear coat and you're never going to be able to get those out. So again, even if you sand your clear coat, you know, you're still going to get some of that marks. So getting a foundation of your primer to the level of paint you want to do. And again, if you're going base clear, that's one thing. Maybe you're just going with a one part paint, right? So maybe you're just going the way they painted them back in the 60s, right? A, a, a single stage paint. If you're doing that, then you don't have to worry about it so much because you can actually wet sand and polish a uh, single stage. But again, depending on what you're after. In my case, I'm going base clear. I will be coming at this with an 800, uh, maybe even a 1,000. But again, that's pretty far down the road still. I've still got a hood to sand. Next time you see me, I'll have a paint gun in my hand again, and we're going to try this again. And maybe this time, with the proper air pressure and with the proper paint consistency, I can lay it out a little bit better than I did before. All right, let's give it a try. So I learned a lesson from yesterday. Um, Pressure at the gun has got to be about 25 to 30. I can regulate it here then, and also the uh, metering rod has to be correct for the nozzle. And also the adjustment, the amount of trigger pull and the amount of paint I've adjusted. So that I'm hitting. I'm getting a beautiful pattern straight up and down. Nicely filled. So let's hit that hood.
Okay, it looks like we did a much better job this time. A lot less of the spatter and more of a uh, coat. Again, it's going to definitely orange peel. Uh, that is simply when you lay the stuff on thick, but uh, it's a lot better and going to be a lot easier to set.